and mute. So you'll have to, um, there's a little button that says, got it, click that, it should clear the screen for you. So just a little nasal breathing, relaxing the, uh, any tension in the body. <clears throat> and then we begin with our opening uh, movements, joint mobilization, hands sliding past the knees, head gently down, spine gently grounding. And the opposite, slide the hands back, look up, arch the back gently. And then again, so we'll do that four times. Try to get movement through the shoulder blades, the elbows are bending, the spine is gently arching, the skull is tilting, the pelvis is even tilting. You're kind of rocking forward and back on the sits bones or the buttock bones in your chair. You're just trying to loosen up any habitual tension. And the next time you finish arching up, then settle to that middle position and do the rotation, sliding left hand forward, right hand and elbow pull back, and gently turn to the right, and gently turn to the left. Four to each direction. And just again, loosening up the moving parts so that they are not held together by what the Taoists, the ancient Chinese called Li or clumsy tension based strength, but held together more by this soft, supple liquid quality or sum, sum. And then coming back to that middle position, and we'll do our side leans, arms hang, softly lean to your right, let the left wrist float up, maybe even the elbow lift up a little, and then switch. And again, you're tipping more to the right buttock and tipping the spine, and then switching. Gently loosening all these moving parts. And then back to middle. Shoulder blade circle. Shoulders go forward, up, over the top, back, and down. And keep doing that about four, five times. Just loosening up that space. between the upper portion of the rib cage and then where the shoulder blades, arms connect, there's all this movable space. And we want that to be wide open, loose, and free. Let's go the other way. Shoulders back, up, over the top, then forward, and repeat that. Loose, round. <clears throat> Two more. And neutral. <clears throat> Bend your elbows. Elbows go out to the side and up. And then down, around, in front, and touch the elbows if you can. And then elbows down, out to the side, up. And down and around. In one more. And elbows straight back behind you. Elbows down, hands up, elbows forward, elbows up, the hands end up going down your back. And then elbows forward, down, and back. 
and down, forward, up. One more. And elbows out, one above, one below. Bear hug. And then elbows out to the side. And other one above, other below. Bear hug. And out. One more of each. And arms down. Hands rest on your thighs. Load, push, load, set it down. Other leg, load, push, load, set it down. Do that a few more times. Load the leg up, push it forward, and then load it back up. Bring it down. One more each. And foot and ankle movement, point foot, flex foot. Invert, evert, that little in and out. Circles. <clears throat> Reverse. And down. Other leg, point and flex. Invert, evert. Circles. Other way. And scoot to the front edge. Legs close together, lift the ball of your left foot, turn the foot and knee out, toes and knee out. Then move the heel, the heel out, the knee in. Toe out, knee out. Heel out, knee in. And finally, toe out. And then walk it in. One, heel in two, toe in three, heel in four, and we're back. Do it again. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, and five. And then in two. Three, four, five. One more. Really focus on that movement of rotation in the hip socket. That's where we're really focusing on loosening up. And we're back. Other leg. Open. Two, three, four. Hold. In. Two, three, four. Hold. And out. And in. <clears throat> One more. And back. Forward fold. Hip hinge. Sitting up. Tipping back <clears throat> from the hips. Sitting up. Holding forward from the hips, <clears throat> sitting up, tipping back from the hips, sitting up. One more. <clears throat> and we'll do the dragon takes a bow here before standing up. So that just means we're trying to really open up the space here, the quad. So hands on your legs with the elbows out, fingers on the inside. Fold between the legs. <clears throat> and then sit upright, arms to neutral as you lean back. Do that again. Elbows flare out <clears throat> as you fold. Lean back, one more. And we're up. Legs back together. 
standing up and sitting down. So you slide your feet back a little. Fold from the hips, arms, head, and shoulders beyond your ankle. Uh -huh. Folding, sinking down. Everything loose and just move from the correct place, from this powerhouse, this middle. Learn to control the body from there. One more. <clears throat> and three squats where you don't sit in your chair. Just fold, drive. Fold and sink. And drive. And stay standing. Now from standing, just gently tip yourself into the toes, come back to the middle, go a little bit to your heels, and then to the middle, and then to the toes, and the middle, back to the heels, middle, one more. So we're moving from our middle, from the belly button middle, Everything else you want, just hanging out. Now, the next time you're in your toes, stay in your toes and go a little bit more to the left ball of foot or toe. And staying in the toes, come back to the middle and then go over to the right. So you're in the front of your foot and you're going just back and forth across, but it's almost like there's a circle on the ground and you're going around the front of a circle. Feel that quality of of round movement, but your middle stays as almost a center point. Now, the next time you get to your right foot, stay there and you're in your toes, go back along the right foot, back towards the right heel. So the left foot might have a little bit of weight, but not as much as the right. Come up along the right foot to the ball of the foot and go back to the heel. So just find that movement, staying in the right leg. Staying on that right leg, just rocking back and forth. Now, when you're in your toes, come across. Now you're in your left foot, stay on the left foot, go back to the left heel, forward to the left toes or ball of foot, back to the heel, and forward to the ball of foot, back to the heel, forward. Next time you go back to the heel, stay in the left heel and stay in both heels as now you come across and then get over to the right heel and then go back to the left heel. So now we're staying back in the heels a little bit, not to any dangerous position, but just finding back and forth and feeling this internal real estate that you're covering, but we're not efforting our way, right? Now let's make the full circle. Stay in your right foot. Come up along the right foot to the toes. Go across the toes to the left toes. Then go back along the left foot to the left heel. Cross the heels. Two more circles in this direction. With each round, can you let go more? Can you relax more? And find how that makes it, in a way, easier to do it. Switch directions of the circle. Effortless, easy. Finding how these pivots just easily roll around. How <clears throat> when you relax the body, you don't have to consciously tense up for the muscles and uh, liquid and, and the whole sort of uh, mechanism of the body to behave correctly. The body knows how to keep itself centered when you relax. Let's come back to now the middle. All right. Make sure you're somewhat close to the right side chair. This is my left arm, but I'm going to say right side when, we're, when I'm doing much of what we're doing. So your right and <clears throat> be close enough to touch it, but ideally no hands on it. Now let your body weight shift more into your left leg to the point where your right foot is empty and lift the heel and get to the tip of the toes, very light. Now lower that whole foot to the ground with no body weight, 
then change the weight into the right leg. Once the right leg is your full leg, then lift the left heel, get to the tip of the left toes, your left toe. Lower the whole foot down with no weight, and then change, feel that internal change. Once the right foot is empty, lift heel, get to the tippy toes. Very important that you let the foot go all the way back to the floor without your weight going into it. So many of you, what's gonna happen is as you put that foot down, you're already going into it. Practice whole leg down so it lengthens to the ground and then internal change. Once that other foot's empty, lift and lengthen the leg back to the floor with no body weight, change. Now you might need your hand on the chair for this next one because Get to the tippy toe and then disconnect and then place the foot back down empty, change. So again, if you want to have a hand on the chair, great. Empty foot, disconnect and then lower it down without any weight in it, then change the weight. Once that leg is empty, lift and lower while still empty, change. Lift, lower, now this skill of soft change of weight can eventually become very instantaneous to where it'll seem as though the leg is coming up as I'm changing, but it's just because I've been able to go, okay, now this is my full, so it's safe for me to pick this up. And then now this is my full, right? But it has to be done with softening, relaxing, right? All right, now, uh, right hand on the chair again for a moment. Take right foot and put it out in front with the heel softly touching the ground. So remember, you're back from your chair and your chair is off to the right, so it's in front of you, off to the right. That gives you a little runway to work, right? Whereas if you were already in front of your chair, then you're reaching behind you for your support. So the idea is to be here. Now, you got your right foot in front, heel touching lightly. Now, like a rocking chair, just rock. Tippy toe your back foot, right? But you haven't left the ground yet. Rock. The tip of the heel, but it's clear this leg is empty. And then we change. Now, this leg is empty. And then this leg, empty. And this leg. This is level one. The goal or idea here is once you understand this choreography, then go back to attending to your meditation uh, channel, that central, upright, effortless alignment through the body that you want to stay perfectly intact even as you're changing weight. Now let's go to level two. Lift and then put the heel back down. Shift. And then like a flamingo, lift, toe back down, shift back. Lift straight leg, lower the heel, shift. Flamingo, toe touch, shift back. Keep doing that. Lift that straight leg, lower the heel lightly, and then shift. And then that back foot is empty, so it's able to lift and go back and find the floor with no body weight in it. And then you're rocking back. One more, level two. All right, now level three. Again, you'll probably need a chair for this. So the leg lifts, you let the knee bend and lift it all the way up. Heel goes down to the ground softly, rock into that foot. Now the back foot, not only heel to butt, but also bring the knee forward and up and then reach the toe back, rock back. Knee up, heel softly touch down, rock. Knee forward and up, toe reach back, rock back. Two more, level three. The main thing we're practicing is one leg is your standing leg. The other one, because it's not being used, is free. Free. 
So making that differential, that change. Now, we're gonna switch sides, so bring the right foot back, shift into the right foot, step your left foot sideways and make your way to the left. Bring the right foot in, chair is nearby, got your little runway out in front of you. Empty the left foot, place it out in front with the heel light, rocking chair, level one, rock, rock back. So this first level, is the best level to practice no hands on any support because we're not leaving the ground. We're not picking any feet up. And so you can sort of get, even though ideally you're 100% empty, maybe you're just doing 80 and 20 and then going back to 80 and 20, but you, you can safely do it. And it's a good psychological challenge to not have your hands on anything. Ideally, they're hanging out or if it feels better to hold them, if they're kind of active and shaking and you want to hold them, totally fine, right? Level one, finished. Let's go to level two. Again, you might want a hand on the chair or not, but it's disconnect and then reconnect softly, raw. And then back foot, flamingo, a little bend of the knee, toe touches back where it was, rock back. Lift. Lower, shift. Remember the real magic is right here, that change. The better you get at, now I'm using this leg. That's the freedom that this then gives. And then the better you get at, now it's this back leg. That's the freedom. And then now it's the other, little flamingo. Leg. Now let's go to level three. Full lift, heel softly down, rock. Back leg, not only heel to butt, but knee forward and up. Reach the toe back, rock back. Imagine that espresso cup just sitting on top of the head and you're not holding it there with tension in the neck and head, but rather by relaxing and letting your alignment just be naturally through you, to the earth so that there's a nice steadiness to your stance, to your posture. All right. Now bring that left foot back, weight into the left foot, right foot steps sideways, make your way back to this right side chair, set up level one again, heel out in front, soft and relaxed. Now watch me do one round, level one, rock, when this back foot is empty, I can just kind of let it swing through and then rock. So we're going to take one step forward and then we're going to go rock back. Once this is empty, I can just kind of let it swing, but notice it's empty. I don't go and put my weight back there. So this empty leg just swings back, toe touches and rock back. Okay. So let's do that together. Your right foot's in front. Rock. Left foot, when it's empty, you can feel it's light, so it can just float forward, touch the heel, and then rock. And then you rock back, wait for it to be empty before you step it, and rock back. So the mantra, shift without stepping, step without shifting, shift without stepping. Shift without stepping back, step back without shifting, and then shift. Eventually that can blend into a, just a natural walk, but most of the time people are, especially as we're all aging, we get stiffer. And then if you have something like Parkinson's you're dealing with, it can throw you off more. We have to slow it down and separate these events of shifting, shifting, Step without shifting, shift without stepping, and get really polished. Let's go to level two. So that would be lift and lower, shift. And now this back foot, instead of just swinging through, we act as though we have to step up and over something and put the heel out in front and then shift. And not only that, but we do the little flamingo lift with the back leg. Then we shift, and this one can be a little tricky. Leg up, tuck, and push back to find the floor. 
then shift back. So I'll do a couple sideways so you can see it. So it's lift, lower, shift, small obstacle, up and over, shift. Back leg, flamingo, up and down. Now we go back, shift, wait for it, up, tuck, push the foot back, back, lift, lower. Let's do two more rounds. Just a nice, easy, loose, empty leg. When the leg is empty, the flamingo should feel easy. Then when you empty the other leg, it's just light and empty, so it can do a little reverse movement. One more. And again, when I'm turned sideways, you don't have to be turned sideways. You can be going front to back. I'm sideways so you can see some angles. Last level, level three, up, softly down, shift. Back leg, heel to butt, knee up, foot floats, leg lowered, shift. So this is just a challenge. And bring that knee up. Now we go back, toe, shift. Up, tuck, push the foot back, shift, and then up. Let's do two more, level three. And it's just kind of an exaggerated challenge to say, how balanced are you? How empty is that leg? If it's really empty, it can, it can lift and tuck and reach, and you're not disturbing your middle. Last one. Just learning to rely on softness rather than tension. All right, we're going to switch sides over to the other. So a little side step. Put that left foot in front, heel empty and light. Let's go level one. Remember, that's the most like normal walking. Shift, swing the foot, shift. Shift back, wait for it to be empty. Swing that empty foot easily and back. And just think of this like casual walking. Just how you walk down the aisle at the supermarket, how you walk in a line at the coffee shop or wherever. It's just this casual kind of, but what you're secretly doing is doing Tai Chi because you're focusing on one full, one empty, step the empty. One full, one empty. One full, one empty, step the empty. All right, level two. You might need your hand on the chair for this one, but from the hip, straight leg, lift and lower, shift, small obstacle. So that's up, over, and shift. And then flamingo lift that back foot just to check, is it empty? Put the toe back down. Now we shift. This leg goes up, tuck, push back, shift. Straight leg. Shift. Small obstacle. Shift. Flamingo. Down. Now we go back. Shift. Reverse that little bicycle wheel. Shift. One more. Level two. And you could stay at level two if that was making you feel very shaky, or level three, where you just somewhat exaggerate heel to butt, knee up, foot out, lower it without disturbing that espresso cup, then shift. And then here you bring the knee forward and up, and then reach that toe back, shift. And then this sort of exaggerated challenge. Shift. Two more. Level three. And again, this is not the way you might walk out in public. But the value of doing this is that you're really opening all the pathways 
so that normal walking will feel more easy, more breezy. Last one here. Because we got to push back that encroaching tension and rigidity. All right, stay in the middle. Now, you got your chairs hopefully set up. Remember, this class is built on this, this setup. So ideally, you have this setup. And now you don't have to move your chairs. They should be wherever they are. I'm moving them so you can see this runway. So this is kind of how you guys are standing. Chairs are in front. Let's all move to this left side of the runway. Turn and face across so that your chairs are going to be on your left, I think. Um, and they'll be your support. Now, level one, place one foot out. Rock. Step it out. Rock. Wrong. Step wrong. So about four, five, six steps. Go back. Backwards is a little harder. Take your time. Wait until you're full empty. Step the empty foot. Toe touches. Then shift. Full empty. Step the empty foot. Shift. 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 Level one again. There and back. Eventually, you just kind of take the training wheels off and you just cruise, all right? But if you're feeling unsteady, stay with that slowed down version first until you can do that and keep the espresso cup idea from spilling, all right? <clears throat> and then once you finish that second round of level one, let's go level two so that each step is as if you're stepping over a small something. Right, I always think of like a little toy on the ground that's that I got to get my foot over. And that challenges how truly balanced are you in that one leg? Let's go back the other way. This is that up, tuck, reach. Going backwards with this one is harder, obviously, for many reasons. One of which is this sort of rebalancing required as you push your foot behind you like that. The body has to sort of rebalance. So notice that right at this moment, you have to really rebalance so you don't fall into your back foot. Level two, one more. This is easier. We can see, right, it's just natural. There's a lot more playroom in front of us. Now we go back. This is where we got to really cue in on that sort of eyes in the back of your head, reaching the toe, finding the floor. Shifting into it, take your time. Take your time. Right, eventually you get good enough at levels one, two, and three. We're just going to do level two, but you start adding closing the eyes, that kind of challenge to some of this stuff, right? We're not doing that today, but as you improve, you take the same exercises and then start adding little challenges, one of which is like, eyes closed, that changes the whole ball game. So I don't suggest doing it until you are very comfortable with uh, everything else. Okay, so now we're still at this left side of the runway. I'm going to turn and face you guys. You turn and face me so we're no longer facing the cross. Now, <clears throat> shift your weight into your left leg. And then that right foot should be free and empty to do a little side step out. Side step in, out, in, out, in. So do your best not to go with the leg. Side step, in. Now, side step, leave your foot out there. Shift so that the right leg is your full leg. Shift back, left leg is your full leg, right? left. Notice how as you're doing this, there's somewhat about going to the side, but most of what matters is letting this leg take your weight and connect you to the root. And then same with this leg. So you don't have to move a whole bunch left and right. It's just enough to then let that leg be the full leg and this one be empty. Now, bring your left empty foot in, back out, in, back out. But again, notice my torso is not moving in space. 
The only thing moving is this leg bone at the hip side. Now bring the leg in, and this might be the most important, the fourth one here, feet touching if you can, or very close together, which is often sort of unstable. And now change the weight so that your weight's going down to the earth through the left leg, the right leg empties a little bit, right? And then change. So with the feet very close together, it forces you to find that vertical line that I was talking about, because we're really not moving side to side at all, but yet this could be empty. And then I change, and now this could be empty. And it's because of this direction of softening through and softening through. One more of each. Now, weight in your left leg, right foot empty, sidestep with no weight, right? Notice I didn't go like that. Here shift. Once left foot is empty, bring it in. Shift. Step without shifting. Shift without stepping. Step without shifting, meaning this foot is hovering. It's still empty if you can. Then do that little internal mechanism shift. Step. Shift. Step in, shift. How's the teacup doing? Softening where you can soften. One more, and we switch direction. Shift. Now, left foot comes in, goes back out, we shift. Right foot comes in, change the weight, left foot out. Change. In. Change. Out. Feel that transfer along the pelvic floor. Transfer. 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 Loose. Easy. Relax. Now, watch me. We're going to do that again, but I just want to show something. So if I stiffen up my body, I could go there and back fast, right? By I just moved fast. I'm moving fast. And it kind of looks a little funny, but that's subtly what's happening in a lot of people's bodies when they're walking. They're moving. They're maybe getting where they're going fast, but you can see all this tension and grabbing on to the body. And then I'm basically using my body like stilts. My legs are like stilts rather than the soft, supple, springy legs that they are. So the other thing to note, if you practice this soft, empty, see now this leg is loose and empty. Now I'm moving fast, right? And I could go shift and bring it in, shift and step it out, shift and bring it in, right? And it's still loose and I'm, I've got all those principles. So there's a way to move fast, but that's what Tai Chi is. It's slowing down to parcel out the, the components of movement. And then once you feel those components and you open the spaces, then you have a swiftness available that is also safe and is also rejuvenative to the body. Because this isn't good for the body. This, this adds strain. This creates other problems. It's also easy to fall. All right. So let's do sidestepping again. Empty right leg, step it out. And some of you have been doing it for a little while. Maybe you want to practice this idea of change and bring it in almost simultaneous. Change and step it out almost simultaneous. Change and bring it in. Change and step it out. Your middle stays intact. Let's go back the way we came. Again, if this isn't happening, this sort of shift and step, shift and step, sort of almost like dancing maneuvers, right? That's not happening. Slow it down. Go back to step without shifting, shift without stepping, step that empty leg, shift, step, shift. 
shift step, right? Okay. And let's close that. Arms go out, around over the top, and settle down to the middle. It's called middle embrace. So remember, yeah, don't get caught up there. Drop them into this position. You got belly button here. And this just kind of closes down what we were doing and then prepares us for the next thing. All right. So last thing we'll do today, some of you this is familiar, maybe some of you this is new, is the rotational movement. Right, so we move sideways, we move forward and back. Now, empty your right leg, turn the right leg out, toes and knee point that way. Notice your hips go a little bit along for the ride. Then bring the leg back to neutral, hips to neutral, and then turn that leg so the toes point in. Notice the hips turn this way, and then we're back to neutral. Turn out, neutral, turn in. Neutral, let's skip neutral. Turn out, turn in, turn out. And notice again, empty, empty, full. And that's what allows this freedom is that one is full rather than my whole body being stuck, all right? And switch legs, change the weight, turn left foot out, neutral, internal, neutral, external, neutral, internal. Skip neutral. And back to neutral. Now, empty the right leg, turn it out. The body weight shifts into the right leg, the body turns to match it, and then you bring the left foot, step it right next to the right foot, parallel. And then empty the right foot again, turn the right foot out 90, and we shift and turn, and we're squared 90 degrees again, and do it again, another 90. Turn out, shift, bring the left foot along. We're gonna go around twice. Picture your center line undisturbed and you're just using these legs to give you some freedom to move. But the key is empty one and then change. After you finish this time around, left leg turns out, shift, square. Turn it out. If you get good at emptying a foot, and in a sense, spending most of your time in either one leg or the other when you're in life. Like when you're standing up at the counter, you're changing back and forth rather than locked into both. That's another bit because then this will just make you always ready to, to make a move, to make a change, right? To adjust. Now, once you're facing forward, let's do the opposite of that, which is right foot points in, uh, toes point in. And then we're shifting as if sort of shifting backwards and bringing the left foot to match it, emptying the right foot again, turning it in, pigeon toeing it, and then shifting and stepping parallel. And again, empty the right foot, turn it in, shift, parallel. Pigeon toe going around twice. Adjusting the foot position and then adjusting the whole orientation of your body. Adjusting the foot position and remembering, as my teacher likes to say, you know how to spell foot, L-E-G, leg. So the foot is the whole leg. So it's not just this separate foot turning. It's the whole leg from the hip turning. And then the hips turn and match with that leg. Let's go around the other way. Once you're facing forward, left leg or foot, right? Empty it before you step it. 
step it and then shift into it. Going around twice. How's the teacup? Constantly balanced. Now, this one I want to do here is somewhat, uh, we've done it before, but it's somewhat new. So we're going to turn the right foot out. So go ahead and just watch me. Turn the right foot out, shift. This left foot's still empty. I'm going to take one step in my new direction. One step, which is that level one step, right? And then I'm going to do that again. My right foot is empty. I'm going to turn it out. I'm going to shift into it. I'm going to turn and reorient, and I'm going to take one step in that new direction and shift into that foot. So now it's like a big square that we're making. Right foot turns out again. So we're shifting, the body's orienting, and then I'm stepping in my new orientation direction. Shift. And then right foot turns out again. Shift, reorient, and take a step. So you're over to the left side of your spot. The right of you is uh, your other chair. Let's do it together. Right foot turns out. Shift, turn, orient, and then take one step with your left foot and shift into it. So you're now advancing in that direction. And then right foot, turn it out. Shift, you're reorienting to your new direction and then stepping in that direction and going. So this is a, to mimic, let's say the telephone starts going off and it's to your right. So you're going, oh, Turn my foot out, shift, reorient, and begin going in the direction that I'm trying to get to, right? And again, shift, turn, take one step, and shift. Go around one more time. Shift, turn, step in that direction. Right foot turns out, shift, take a step. Turn the foot out, take a step. Great job. Move to the right side. Let's finish doing the same thing with the other leg. Left foot turns out. Shift, orient yourself that way. The right foot is now empty. Take a step with the left foot. I'm sorry, right foot. Shift into it. Left foot is empty. It's free to turn out. Shift, orient the body and take one advancing step in your new direction and shift into it. Turn the left foot out. So we're working on changing our orientation and taking one advancing step that way. Turning the left foot out. Change your orientation. Take one advancing step. Do that one more time. Out. Shift. Step. Shift. Turn out. Step. Turn out. Step. Out. And shogun wings, hands roll up and over, settle, settle, settle down to the belly. And hands rub, back of hand, palms, back of other hand. Palms, and then right on the groin area, up and down. This area tends to get stagnate, stagnant, and the muscles there are kind of fragile. So we did a little walking and rotating. So make sure those loosen. And then hip flexors, front of the hip, come around the tail, up onto the lower back. And then we clear the channels like you're sitting in a squat. Hands go down the outside of the leg, come around to the inside and stand all the way up. Come around to the back, do that again.
One more. And then finally, the arms up the outer arm over the shoulder. Turn that arm up. Sweep. Outer arm, inner arm. Outer, inner, outer, inner. One more. And then switch. Up the outside, down the inside. resets the natural flow. And then finally, one more shogun closing gesture. And then seal the practice, one hand over the belly, other hand over that hand. And then the little Taoist bow, grab one thumb, hand comes around, fold. Thank you. Alrighty, so if there are any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, find a comfortable seat.